This is Deductor continuing the Battle Brothers Gladiators No Deaths Challenge. Uh, I read through some of the comments. Thank you everyone uh, for posting. I certainly agree that this is going to be either a very short campaign or a very long campaign. Um, but let's do some names first. I had a chance to look through some of the folks who submitted uh, character suggestions or name suggestions. And um, James Huang wants a character named Ego. I felt like the bear really looks kind of like an Ego. Doesn't he like, look at his shiny yellow armor. Like that's an Ego right there. So congratulations, buddy. Uh, Layin, you're the Viper. Congratulations on that name. And then um, Runar Thor, welcome to the team. But you probably won't be around for very long. Not because you'll die, because then the campaign will be over, but because I'll dismiss you because you are truly terrible. Uh, two stars in melee doesn't mean anything when your starting melee is uh, 45. If he had actually two stars in melee skill here with 55 and like zero in melee defense with a star, like it's not great, but he's plenty usable. Uh, as it is, he's like usable, but uh, we want to get rid of him. And unfortunately, I can't make like true father brothers who like I want them to get killed off in battle. Uh, I'm just going to make him survivable and his whole purpose in life will be sometimes he's going to clutch a pitchfork and stab a couple times. And once we get like better armor, like raider gear, we'll put him in raider gear, like with a spear or maybe a dagger and a shield. And his entire job will be to lock down one brigand raider who has a shield and just shield wall for eternity. That is literally the only thing you're capable of doing, Runar. But that's something. We have three super elite killers. Like, we don't need more damage. Ah, what am I saying? We always need more damage. <laughs> okay, so on the world map, what I'm thinking... Uh, so, I've been spoiled. Um, I've been watching some weird Sins' streams, his attempts on this. And I know the Golden Goose is somewhere here. I think it might be over here, or maybe it was in the middle here. I want to say it's actually over here is where it is. Because, like, I already kind of know where it is, I'm not going to pretend like I don't know that information. That's the only important piece of information I know. I don't actually know much else about what's going on in the map. But, like, because I know that, I'm not going to pretend I don't know that. I'm going to try to get the Golden Goose, and then we'll get a lot of money, and we can be more flexible then. Uh, but, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure where the Golden Goose is. So, I want to give myself the maximum amount of time to explore while squeezing arena fights, since, like, we make the most money from them. My plan is to actually rest here. I don't usually camp, but we're going to camp here until morning. I'm going to take uh, the next arena fight, then we're going to Hyo tail it to Dahab, see what sort of contracts exist, and then um, hopefully one of the contracts sends me out this way. Um, if not, I'm we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we do there. Um... Uh, then I want to try to make it back here by the evening of day three. So we squeezing an arena fight. We wait until morning, squeezing one more arena fight. And then uh, I'm probably going to, at that point, we could go here to Al Hazred, see what's going on. But then I really want to start going to Sunmark uh, and then like fighting raiders and stuff. Um, I, I Oh, one other very important shout out. I'm going to put a link in the chat to the YouTube videos um, based on the Twitch stream that I did with Sunware Sins on a Deserter's uh, Unexplored Random Seed Run. It is like the most intense Battle Brothers experience I have ever had. Like that campaign is just incredible. Um, like two top players. Uh, I feel like Almost all of our decisions are on point. We've made like, uh, I wouldn't say there are no mistakes, but very few mistakes. And like, it's hard to see how, given the information we had, like another player could have done better. Like there might be a few small things here or there, but not only the big picture, but most of the battles, I feel like we played basically as well as it could possibly be done. Um, we're on day 29 right now. It is some like intense stuff. 
uh, it is just like a phenomenal campaign. Everybody sh uh, who wants to learn like Battle Brothers should go check it out. Uh, uh, I will say that that campaign has taught me some renewed respect for certain enemies. Uh, tried fighting a noble uh, troops uh, with a party of level 4 and 5 guys. It turns out, I know there was a noble buff recently, a small buff, but boy, uh, those noble troops, uh, I remember they used to be free loot, but they gave us some pretty serious trouble. Uh... At least when our guys were like level 4 and 5. And our guys were like not good brothers. Like they were pretty... The quality of our guys are pretty low. But even so, those nobles gave us serious trouble. And then nomads. My god, the nomad outlaws. I think I got too used to campaigns where I just like slaughter them. But three outlaws gave us some pretty serious problems. And Somewhere Sins was the one who was like, Oh, I really respect the nomads. You gotta watch out. This is a hard fight. I was like, Pah! It's just three outlaws, like, in some, like, riffraff. Like, well, what am I worried about? Turns out he was right. Those three outlaws were very serious business. So, uh, now that I've, uh, had some renewed appreciation for the nomads, I do not want to stick around in the south and get, like, destroyed by nomad outlaws. Like, right now, I would not even want to fight three outlaws. Uh, two outlaws in arena is plenty fine. I mean, throw a net and stuff, like... It depends on what weapons they have, too, but, um, three outlaws, my god, that was, that was, whoo, they had the pole maces, it was the pole mace and the two-handed cleaver, like, those are, like, that pole mace is such a scary weapon, all right, I have renewed respect for that now. All right, with my ran over, I'm going to wait until day, and we're going to do the next arena fight. All right, it's day. Um, I also want to see if doing the arena significantly ups your renown. Like when you complete a contract, you get plus 25 renown. I want to know if that happens with the arena as well. So we're at 165 and let's check out no matches. Okay, I guess I have to wait a little longer. What? Come on. Oh, it has to say day two. That's when the uh, next fight spawns, right? Yeah. Come on, game. There we go. Okay, uh, spider. Yes, four spiders. Yeah, we will slaughter them like lambs. Uh, 500 crowns, uh, I accept. So, the strategy against spiders is very simple. There is no real thinking. Um, I actually... No, the spiders always go ahead of us. Um... Don't even need this shield like uh, it doesn't do anything for us um, just reduces our fatigue don't need nuts make sure we have the three um arena collars right three arena collars very good all right so we back up one let them come up Slaughter them. Uh, it doesn't matter if we end our turn immediately, but there's no reason not to. So we might as well wait for a little more adjacency bonus. No reason not to adrenaline. Um. Lay in here has the slightly better defense. So let's do that. Why might adrenaline? Lay in, you're gonna wait. I'm gonna move Ego up. Good job, Ego. Don't really see the need to adrenaline. Oh, Lay in, two misses. So they're gonna get a free attack off on us. Good job dodging that. What is your defense? 23. What's dodge giving you? 9? That's really good. Flawless victory, of course. It's just for spiders. How do you not get uh, flawless? Ooh, a one call. Hey, if this is a good contract, I'll do that. What was this again? I don't even remember what this was. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, well... I'm not gonna, like, get rid of the contract because I want to go there in a couple days i'm not gonna say no what is this 
Hey, he wants me to deliver cargo to the hop. That was literally where I wanted to go. I'm not going to negotiate. You barely get more money and you lower your reputation a little bit. Like, why wouldn't I take a contract that lets me do, like, literally what I was going to do anyway? This butcher is potentially interesting, but I feel like we got more guys we could hire at the next town. If there was anything to buy here, right? Um, we might even be able to squeeze in a little trading. Uh, let me... Uh, you cannot find the arena while you contract to do other work. Good to know. Uh, also, I want to check my reputation. Ah, the arena fight does give you 25. So it's plus 30 because every time you win a fight, no matter what, you just get 5 renown. And so the other 25 must have been from doing the arena. That's interesting. Arena gives you plus 25 rep. That's really good to know. Um, or renown. Not reputation. Uh... What was I thinking? Oh, so let's check this town. There's plantations. That is spices. And there's silk. But I don't see a dye maker. We might make a little bit of money selling dyes there, right? So here's the dye maker. And I'm just double checking. It would really suck if I bought some dyes. I couldn't... Uh, unload yeah i don't see any dies there now the prices are not phenomenal i i think i should make a small profit from doing this and if for some reason this um oh the wines are worth that much eh. interesting um anyway um well, I could also do incense. Can't remember if it it was silk. Wait, is no no silk is um silk is its own trade good, right? What's uh what's incense come from? Incense dryer, okay, dye maker, and then this is the plantation. That's interesting. This city has um then the goat pens. One, two, three, four, five, six attachments. I thought all the southern cities usually had like a gazillion attachments, but this city, the hub, has one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have a six attachment. It's not like a die maker hiding somewhere, right? That will screw up my trading. I really hope not. All right, well, I am going to go buy the dies and then execute my trading strategy. All right, as I was heading on the road, we got our first ambition. Now, as tempting as it is to do the five arena fight uh, contract, I think this is a trap. The problem with doing this is um, we've already done two fights. So first of all, we have to stick around here for longer. Second of all, the fifth fight is an extra hard one and it there could be like some like you could have to fight two gladiators i am not fighting two gladiators right now not until i get my own nimble to counter their nimble uh so like there's a lot of the fifth fight that i literally just can't do uh the first one kill a camp uh we have to discover a camp it doesn't work if you're given a camp from a contract uh and i'm skeptical of our ability to fight camps uh in any time in the near future it depends on the camp like a tiny little tier one camp called like a rune havo or stuff like that we could beat but we can't fight undead camps uh we can't fight like any reasonable nomad camps it would have to be like a tiny little nomad camp um which there could be, but it's hard to say. This allies one is pretty reliable. I feel like if we can't get it with a southern city, which we probably can't, we should be able to get it with a northern city pretty easily. It'll probably take us until day 10. But uh, this is like the reliable one that we will always be able to do. This one's speculative, and this one I'm ju uh, is just, I think, bad. Like this one, if we get lucky, if you knew like more of the map, could be really good. But uh, I'm going to take the safe option. Alright, I have to say, uh, the travel road was uneventful. 
but um, this took way longer than I thought to get here. Maybe I'm a little too used to having the scout to buff my movement, but this took an entire day. My plan was to get here tomorrow evening, but that doesn't seem likely. I feel like the Golden Goose is too important, like we just have to get it. So um, what that means is if we can get back here day four evening, that would be acceptable. Then we're squeezing two more arena fights and uh, head north. Um, or, or we could head to Al Herb's Red, see what sort of contracts, and then head north. That probably makes the most sense. I don't want to cut straight through the desert. Could be all sorts of nasty beasties and stuff that I don't want to fight. Um, I can't believe I'm saying, like, I don't want to fight. What sort of craziness is that, huh? Um, now, fun fact about these uh, contract deliveries, it buffs the rep with both towns. So, oh, I guess it doesn't when it's a southern city. I know with the northern cities, that's the main reason to do those contracts. It ups your reputation with both the uh, town that's receiving the cargo and the town that asks you to send cargo. That kind of sucks. Like, that's kind of disappointing. Hmm. Okay, we have some one skulls. What do we got here? Um, nomads. Yes, yes, I could kill nomads for you. I'm not gonna bother to negotiate southwest. Uh, maybe. Uh, Al Anwa. Where is that? Oh, is that where we're? Um, is that where we just came from? Hey, that's great. Okay, I think the Golden Goose is up here. Unfortunately, you have to go southwest. Which is fine. Um, how, how's our armor and stuff looking? Basically repaired. We should be fine fighting a few nomads. So, okay, we're going to do that. We're going to get back. It's going to be day three. I'm going to sell off some stuff. Um, or... I could go out, try to find a golden goose now. I have pay for two days. That's plenty. Plenty of provisions. Um, I'm going to gamble that I find a golden goose now. I think it was over here. Um, might be completely wrong, though. I think it was, like, here somewhere. Maybe it was over here. Gambo, going to and then do the contract. Um, so, like, should I do the contract first, or should I do the Golden Goose first? Um, one of the things I was debating is um, if I got back after getting the Golden Goose in his day, I could hire more guys. But we probably don't need more guys to do this contract. And I really want to, like, minimize downtime. So our armor is repaired, our guys have full health. We might take a few hits uh, when doing this fight, and that will give us a chance to heal up. So let's do the contracts first. Oh, good. That's really close. Should be the same uh, tier of enemies, like a couple um, cutthroats. But let's make sure. We have our guys equipped correctly. I feel like nuts are actually the most useful. Oh, I actually did want to make a swap. Uh, the Viper, I want to make sure you can go quick. With the Mace, you fat out and you have lower initiative. Um, your initiative, because it's so good, going quick is important. And Ego, you have uh, Iron Lungs. Oh my god, you just have no fatigue to do anything, though. I think... I don't want to give it to some of your sins. The thing is, he can Adrenaline, and it's too good, like with the Scimitar. I think, like, given the fatigue levels, I don't really have a choice. I really need to find Lay in a different weapon. All right, I don't think I have a choice here. All right. Lastly, uh, who gets the other net? Maybe Sins. We'll put it in the pocket. How much is this? Five fatigue. I don't really think we're going to need it. 
Oh, I could uh, I could make this change. That makes sense to me. And now if I give you the mace. 45, you do have the iron lungs. Let's see how this goes. Even without shield wall, you're pretty solid. Let's see how this loadout goes. Uh, let's have the pitchfork out first. We may not need that. Okay, five. Those are like all cutthroats, right? Please don't be an outlaw. We can't actually beat. Oh, I forgot to field. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, that's fine. Like I don't need him. I don't need him for this fight. Um, why can't I remember his name? Uh, Thor, Runar Four. Whoops. Ah, eh, we don't need him. That's actually good because I don't want him to gain experience. Hmm. So, in this fight, there's an uh, interesting tactical choice that players... A lot of players will, first of all, just move their characters up and start attacking. But uh, if you take some time to think about it, there's two tactical choices that I think make the most sense. And then, like, other choices that I'm not really sure uh, if there's really any other good choices basically i can put ego either here between this double grip nomad and this nomad with the mace or i can put ego here next to this uh, nomad cutthroat if i put ego um to tank both of them i would move lay in up stab and then move somewhere since up depending on how the stab goes um i may do something else uh, Sun Worsens is definitely going to Adrenaline. So, uh, for instance, if I kill this, the Adrenaline will allow me to double slash this Cutthroat, which may or may not kill it, but should at least do a lot of damage. And uh, Sins does have the uh, armor to take a hit or two, which he is. Uh, and then Lee and the Viper might even go ahead of some of these next turn. Like, if I hit this one with my attacks, he could be slow down enough for Lee to go... First, I could also move Ego here, lay in here in between these two, and then somewhere since here. Uh, that's also pretty good. Like, I don't think it's bad, but it would allow all three cutthroats with the shield to be totally uncontrolled. And um, it's uh, they'll each get one attack next turn, uh, but we can't control them. If I go here, this cutthroat will be able to get two attacks. Uh, or it's going to shield wall and attack once, or it's going to shield wall and pocket sand. Um, they might just all shield wall, they might all move up and pocket sand. The nomads are a little harder to predict than the raiders. So like the line is I put Lego here, Ego here or Ego here. I personally like Ego here. Um, I suppose there's a... And then I want to put the Viper here and then... Uh, some weird sins here because with adrenaline he has maximal flexibility if I put the viper here and sins here He's not as flexible next turn. So like these little decisions they can matter um, You want to kill the double grippers as fast as possible and then the spear guys this guy with the crappy mace in the shoe He can't actually do anything to us like he's just gonna sit there and do nothing Spears they can't hurt us too bad, but they're at least accurate. So they're gonna hit uh, and the double grippers just do tons of damage, so, you know, and they have no choice but to attack. Guys with the shields and the spirit, they might, like, just shield wall. So, this fight, although it's trivial, these decisions, uh, like, it's good practice for future battles. Plus, it actually kind of matters. If one of our gladiators gets injured, it's really bad. We need to minimize the damage taken. I personally think the line where I move Ego here... And then uh, the Viper here, and then Sins here is the best. Gives us the maximal degree of flexibility. Uh, if I move Echo here, lay in here, and then Sins here, it's also pretty good. But I feel like it's not as flexible, and I don't, like... It's a little harder to predict what the AI will do. If I put Echo here, yeah, I take one extra attack, but he's a tank. He can take it. And I know for a fact where this Cutthroat's going to be at all times. So... Let's do that. It goes also very slow, so there's no harming waiting. We're never going to go ahead of them. Layin's going to move up. Stab. Ooh, that's not good. 
So since Ego is actually probably going to attack because I need to kill as fast as possible. Um, the defense is not nearly as good. Even without Shield Wall, he's got 38. And I don't care if this puny nomad with a... Sh like, he's not double gripping. He can't do anything to us. Oh, too bad we don't get to go ahead of this cutthroat with land. Wow, why is... How come your initiative... Hmm, we really need to up your initiative. It's sad when you're not moving ahead of nomad cutthroats. Well done, Sins. That decapitation. No reason not to wait. We might adrenaline. Oh, wow. You dodged somehow. The pocket sand. Yep. Attack and do nothing. Okay, the pocket sand's quite annoying. Stab away, land. And I'm going to end your turn immediately. I wonder... I don't know if this is how distracted works. Like... Uh, how it works with end turn immediately. Do I get the go ahead of this cutthroat or not? We're going to find out. Ego. We might as well attack at least once. The question is, do I hack the second time? I think the answer is yes. I just want to kill this. We already talked about like how this nomad with the mace is not a threat. He's just going to shield wall and like swing and do nothing. Uh, dislocated shoulder. That's really good. That injury makes it so that the nomad can attack. Or uh, like it's minus three AP, so he can attack, or he can shield wall, he can throw sand, and that's literally it. No reason not to adrenaline. Um, four turns, Leon's gonna go first, so there's no reason for me to attack him. Like, even if somehow Leon missed both his hits, this one is so like close to dead. Uh, it's good to know, by the way, that the uh, distracted effect ends, and you get all your initiative back for calculation next turn. I'm gonna have to remember that. But this nomad, he's not gonna like be able to do anything. So killing him, yeah, it lowers the morale, but I would rather see if I can do something to this cutthroat. Like we might be able to inflict an injury. Yep. Or just kill him flat out. Beautiful work. So no reason to move up. Let's let our tank take the hit. Oh, he uh, double attack, wow. So at this point, I'm just going to let this Nomad keep attacking us. He's rolling on 17. If I shield well, he's going to roll like 9%. We have no rush. Now we get all the adjacency bonuses. We might as well wait around for maximum surrounds and then hack away. Okay, so we don't get to go ahead of him with uh, Ego, but Sins and Leon might actually go ahead of him. In fact, all of us go ahead of him because I guess the cut Achilles tendon lowers his initiative. Like, so a flawless victory. Uh, we got a little lucky with some of our hits and some of our like 70% defenses, and there was that spear that was like 48% or whatever. But, um,. Like, these little decisions are how you get, like, results like this. And they're good practice for tougher fights where it really does matter. So, and plus this is a no-def challenge. Like, I am ultra paranoid about everything. Alright, got some level ups. Let's check it out. Um, Sins... Hmm, I do want to start getting your fatigue up, but I don't think I can pass up the plus four hit points here. We're going to be able to get your fatigue up. Don't worry, buddy. You have strong, don't forget. Like, So you're actually at 111. You're good on resolve. Hit points is really good. You have 80. That's that's acceptable. Like You don't necessarily need more. Uh, lay in. It's real tempting to grab that plus four hit points. Real tempting. Got to get the initiative. You're having some issues there. Um, what was your starting attack again? Um, I'm thinking about skipping a melee attack. So your starting attack was 66. If I skip this, you're going to be at 93. Which is good. 
still like really really good but i've already sort of committed to the nine lives line don't need that much more hp oh this is real tough so i was either gonna make you the standard sort of quick hands like dagger shenanigan viper or i was gonna make you a mace duelist with a mace duelist you just like you have to have attack you just you can't really have enough attack like the whole point of a mace duelist is to hit and kill um Boy, this is hard. I hate giving up plus attack. I would, if this was plus five initiative, I would have actually given that up, but I don't want to give up a plus six. Uh, I think I actually, so I can get myself to 70 something hit points. The other option is I take Colossus at some point in conjunction with the nine lives, but that's too much. Like, I don't think you need both. So if I take plus four and I do it again, like I do it two more times at some points, I should be able to get like 70 something hit points. How else can I get myself more hit points? Gifted can give me a little more hit points. Gifted could uh, put me like, and get myself about 72 or 68 hit points with Nimbo. Because I'm not taking Colossus. How else can I get myself more hit points? I don't really think there is any other way for me to get more hit points. I hate giving up the plus three, but I think I'm going to do it. If this weren't a no death run... Well, no, that doesn't make sense. The no death shouldn't matter. Like... Let's say I play normally. What would I do? I would still, I think, lean towards the hit points. Viper's gonna get a gazillion veteran levels. This is the thing. Like, he's gonna get tons of veteran levels. Before I do any of the legendary locations, just leveling up like the rest of my team, he's gonna get at, like at least plus five. Uh, as I level up the rest of the team, it's just like so I can assume He's gonna get like 98 attack that makes me feel a lot better about taking more hit points because I can just like factor in the fact he'll get lots of veteran levels Okay, I hate doing it, but I don't think I can just skip any more attack If it weren't a plus four, it, this would not even be a decision Ah, oh, makes me feel real nervous and for his um, perks, um, Quick Hands would be really good if I were going that build, but he can't actually use Quick Hands right now. Like, there's nothing for him to use, the, the, the two-handed weapon with the Quick Hands. So, Relentless gives him a pseudo-adrenaline effect, which um, we've noticed. We're not actually as fast as I thought I would be. Going fast is important. Uh, and on all builds, I will take Relentless with him. Nothing else is as impactful. Like, I don't actually know if I want Pathfinder or anything like that. I'm not gonna greed for student. Like, that's too greedy. I don't need Colossus. Like, the whole point of Nine Lives is to not take Colossus. Uh, and that's like, you're starting to get too many defensive perks. It's not good. Like, uh, Battle Brothers is, you can't just load yourself with all defense perks. It's a balance of offense and defense. And winning doubt, you lean towards offense. Uh,. So, Relentless, that's an offense perk, by the way, like, the extra little dodge you get from it is whatever. The whole point is to go fast and kill. So, and you get some incidental benefits out of it. Ego, buddy. Ah, I'm gonna skip this plus one defense. You have some fatigue problem. Even with Nimbo, I want to get you a little more fatigue so you can do some stuff for me. I was gonna. Oh, I already took Pathfinder on you. 
Um, I actually wasn't super sure what I was going to do with you. There were two lines I was thinking of. Gifted is also just a, like a good choice. So the problem is the two lines are mutually exclusive. There's a line where I go um, defense with Indam. Like Indam, if I do Indam, you kind of have to take recover even without Iron Lungs. But it feels real bad. Like he's too good to Indam. His stats are too good. So I really want to do some sort of fatigue neutral build with him. Um, with like a, like a sword, shield, fatigue neutral type build or double gripping like there's a lot of flexibility um could be a duelist like that's not out of the question i'm gonna have to think about that uh since i think i wanted to make you a cleaver expert pathfinder is just like good it's just good with most things it's really good in the desert it combos well with adrenaline um yeah it doesn't Hurt to have more Pathfinder. It's like fatigue management as well. Okay, I think I I just love making like the uh, lion, the cleaver expert. I think he does really well. He could also be a mace expert. That's also like pretty good, and it doesn't suck to take a Pathfinder for that. Uh, yeah, I think that's solid. Okay, let's go back to town. Back to town, we get some money. Let's see uh, who we can hire, a gambler. That could be our bannerman. Not excited by anyone else. Uh, ooh, we made 20 goes from the dies. You know what? I'll take it. Uh, I don't really need more tools or anything. Or even food. We're actually pretty solid on that. Uh, what about this garbage? Uh, these Nomad Maces are actually pretty solid. I think they're just objectively better than the uh, Bludgeon. Yeah, like 25 to 35 and 90% against armor. So versus 20 to 35, 75% against armor. So these are just objectively better. Spear is always useful. You never know when these spears are going to come in handy. And shields, of course, are always useful. And we got a dagger. We got an extra dagger. Sweet. Three shields. Helmets, hey. Congratulations, Runar, you have a helmet. You actually look kind of like a nomad. Uh, what was I going to check? Oh, right, hires. Um, We could always hire a gambler elsewhere. I don't need him to do any missions. Um, there's no reason to hire him to eat our food while we go wandering about the desert. Like, at the very least, I want a bannerman. Uh, even in a small party, because they open up certain fights like Geist, and the resolve buff is just, like, good. Like, if I have a bannerman and all he does is give my gladiators plus six resolve or... Well, plus eight, let's say, realistically. And occasionally stab with his banner. That's worth it. Like, that alone is worth it. Uh, I'm not going to hire anyone. Um, and I'm not going to do this contract. Yeah, I, I probably will take it. However, um, once, it, uh, once we get back here, why not, right? But I want to gamble on finding the golden goose which I think is over here, which I will do in the next video. Thank you for watching. Until next time.